From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Oh, hi, Pat. Hey, I thought you were on vacation. I was. I got called back right in the middle of it in the of Ned Grant. You know him? Grant, the Broadway columnist? That's the one. Well, what's he got to do with your vacation? He's heavily insured by one of the companies we represent. And right now, he's taking his vacation. Wow. Well, Ned has made a lot of enemies in his time. I know. I read his column. Yeah. And it looks like one of those enemies is trying to make Ned's vacation permanent. Savvy? I'll be right over, Pat. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, Act One of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the ideal vacation matter. Expense account item one, a dollar twenty for a taxi from my apartment to the office of Universal Adjustment Bureau, where Pat McCracken was waiting for me, his face covered with sunburn and worry. Just when I was beginning to relax and enjoy my vacation. Sit down, Johnny. Thanks. Now, what's the deal about this Ned Grant? When you say you read his column, you know he prints some pretty blunt stuff sometimes. Yeah. I've often wondered how he gets away with it. A couple of years ago, he dug up some evidence on a bad boy named Willie Bemis. Bemis. Bemis, yeah. The stuff he printed helped get Bemis convicted, didn't it? Yeah, but he swore he'd get even with Ned. Oh, well, a fellow in Ned Grant's position hears that kind of threat all the time. Besides, with Bemis in jail, what's the problem? None at all, Johnny, if he were in jail. He broke out last night. Oh, I see. Does Grant know that Bemis is on the road? No, I told you, Grant's on vacation, probably as far from a newspaper as he can get. So you think he's in danger? Well, what would you think? Oh, but if Bemis has any sense, he's heading in some other direction as fast as he we can. We can't afford to take the chance, Johnny. Well, look, Pat, I still don't see where I figure in this. Why not just arrange for police protection for Grant until Bemis gets picked up? <laughs> you want to protect the guy, i got to find him first. Find him? Yeah. You mean you don't know where Grant is? Apparently nobody knows. Oh, great. And I'm supposed to find him. That's right. Oh, and do me a favor, huh? Like what? Find him before Willie Bemis does. <laughs> I know enough about Bemis to realize he wouldn't hesitate to gun down anybody who got in his way, including me. So I headed for New York. That's item two, $23.40. I located the apartment house where Ned Grant lived and had a talk with a manager in his office at the rear of the first floor. I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar, but I really don't have the slightest idea where Mr. Grant went on his vacation. Well, didn't he leave a forwarding address? Uh, no, he just told me to hold all his mail for him here until he got back. And he didn't say anything at all that would give you a clue as to where he might have gone. Ooh, none at all. Oh, great. I don't know if you know Mr. Grant very Not well, personally. but... Uh, well, he's unpredictable, let's put it that way. Of course, the kind of life he leads would make a character out of anyone, I guess. You mean batting out that column every day, huh? Yes, and his phone ringing every ten minutes and strange people traipsing up to see him at all hours. Really, I can understand his not telling anyone where he went on his vacation. He just wanted to get away from it all. He kept saying that this time he was going to have an ideal vacation. Ideal vacation. That could mean anything from a trip to the moon to, well, Lord knows what. Tell me this. Did he take much luggage? Well, I don't even know, but he hadn't been gone ten minutes before my phone started ringing with calls for it. Your phone? Oh, yes, Mr. Grant had his disconnected before he left. Uh, tell me, Mr. Dollar, what's so uh, urgent about finding Mr. Grant? There's an escaped convict named Willie Bemis who has it in for him. Oh? He could be looking for Grant. If so, I have to find Grant first. I see. Well, I wish I had more information for you. Oh, I tell you, you might try Miss uh, Anthony. Huh? Possibly she could help you. Well, who's Miss Anthony? Uh, Doris Anthony. Uh, well, uh, a close friend of Mr. Grant. Oh? You know where I can find her, where she lives? Well, as I understand it, she has a small apartment somewhere on uh, East 73rd Street. Good, I'll find it. Thanks, Mr. Crothers. 
I walked outside and hailed a taxi. But then, just as I was about to step into it, I froze. Because I caught a glimpse of somebody walking quickly into the service entrance at the side. And there was just enough light to tell me it was none other than Willie Bemis. I headed back in fast and straight to the door of Crothers' little office. The door of it was locked. Crothers, open up. Crothers. Okay, then I'll open it. Hey, Crothers, what happened to you? Oh, oh, Mr. Dollar. That's right, what happened? This man, right after you left, he came barging in. That was Willie Bemis. What did you tell him, Crothers? Only, only what I told you. And it looks like he and I are starting out even. Huh? But this is one race I don't want to end up in what you'd call a dead heat. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the ideal vacation matter. I looked up Doris Anthony's address on East 73rd and took a cab. That's item three, $1.75 to her apartment. She was tall, rangy, dark hair. And somewhere along the line, I'd seen her before, but I couldn't remember where. Ned Grant, how would I know where he is? He isn't exactly the sort of guy that lets you in on his plan. Hey, listen, Doris, this may be the oldest line in the book, and I know it, but haven't I seen you somewhere before? Could be. I've been around a while. Like where? Oh, I used to sing in a couple of clubs around town. That's where I met Ned. He liked me, so he helped me. In his column, is that what you mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. His apartment manager says you're a very good friend of Ned's. He has a lot of girlfriends. My main claim to fame is I'm always handy. Well, look, Grant told the apartment manager he was going to take an ideal vacation. Any idea what that would mean or where? Sure, wherever there are girls. What do you want him for? Somebody's out to get him. What do you mean, who? Willie Bemis. That name mean anything to you? Bemis is in prison. He was. He's out now. What? When? You didn't know? I haven't read the papers today. Does that change your mind, any, about helping me find him? Look, really, I don't know where he is, honest. There is one thing that might help, though. Yeah, what? Well, a week or so ago, while I was out with Ned, he stopped in at a travel agency. Uh, Davis, I think the agent's name was, on 50, 51st Street, around there. Okay, I'll follow it up. Johnny, if Ned doesn't know, Bemis... Yeah, and if I don't get to him first, he's in for a real nasty surprise. There was still something about Doris that stuck in my mind, but I couldn't quite peg it. So I decided to do a little quick research on her. I dropped in to see an old friend who worked in one of the newspapers. We dug through a lot of clippings in the morgue. Doris had sung at half a dozen spots around town, and there were a lot of pictures on her. Then I came to one that rang a large size bell. It was a shot of her sitting at a nightclub table. And a man sitting there with her was Willie Bemis. <laughs> I headed back to her apartment fast. But she was gone. The manager told me she'd left in a hurry and with a suitcase. Now I didn't know where I stood. If Doris was still friendly with Bemis, it could very well be that she knew where Grant was and was helping Willie Bemis find him. In that case, the lead she gave me on the travel agent was only a bum steer to throw me off the trail. But the way things stood, I didn't have anything else to go on at the moment. So I had to take a chance she'd been on the level. I headed for West 50th Street and the travel agent she told me about, a man named Davis. Ned Grant. Plus, customers like him I can do without. What do you mean by that? Here, I'll show you. Here we are. A reservation at Nassau. Here's one in Bermuda. Oh, and here's one for the Virgin Islands. He had you make all those for him? Every one. That sort of thing doesn't make me very popular at those resorts, believe me. Well, it's a sense you can't be at all those places. If you ask me, he's not at any of them. He's always doing that sort of thing. Well, that's a lot of help. Just the same, I'm going to call those places. Where's your phone? Right there on the desk. But I tell you... Excuse me. Hello? Who? Oh, yeah, just a minute. Uh, It's for you, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Johnny Dollar. It's Doris Anthony, Johnny. Well, well, I didn't think I'd be hearing from you again. Why not? After I found out you were an old friend of Willie Bemis, I went back to your apartment. You'd cleared up. Johnny, I'm no longer a friend of Willie Bean. Oh, now, wait a minute, sister. It's the truth. 
But I was afraid he might come to see me. That's why I left. Oh, sure. Johnny, the reason I'm calling, I think I know where Ned could be. Where? Well, I'm not sure, but a few days ago, he went to see a friend of his named Mike Hastings. Mike owns a ski lodge up in Vermont. Ski lodge? There's no skiing this time of year. I know. The lodge is closed, but Ned's gone up there once or twice before when he wanted to get away from everything. <sighs> okay, where is it? It's called Hastings Lodge, about 20 miles beyond Bradbury, on a little country road. Now, look. I have no choice but to go on up there. Have you told anyone else about this? No, of course not. Okay, Doris. Don't. Expense account item four, $38.50. Transportation by plane and rented car to Hastings Ski Lodge. As I jounced over the bumpy road up in the Vermont woods, I couldn't help thinking this might be strictly a wild goose chase. But at the moment, I couldn't afford to pass up any lead. It was after dark when I finally drove up to the lodge. It sprawled on the side of a hill way out in the middle of nowhere. There were no lights on, no sign of life about the place at all. The door was unlocked. Inside, the room was pitch dark with all the curtains drawn. I couldn't find the light switch, but I had a real funny feeling. Like maybe there was somebody else in the room with me. Grant? Grant? Sorry, buddy. You got the wrong party. Bemis. That's right. Willie Bemis. Just hold it right where you are, boy. How'd you find out about this place? What difference does it make? Yeah, I guess you got a point there. Except I have a nasty little idea who might have tipped you off. Well, where's Ned Grant? He hasn't shown up yet. So what happens now? So I'll wait for him. What about me? I'll give you three guesses about you, but I figure you're only going to need one of them. of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. It is... And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the ideal vacation matter. Stand still, Dollar. My gun is on the left, if that's what you're looking for, Bemis. Oh, thanks. So Doris tipped you off, huh? I had a little talk with her. And I thought she was a friend of Grant's. You never know, do you? I guess you're right. Dollar, I'm afraid you're in my way around here, and that means... Well, you get the message, don't you? Yeah, I get the message. You see, you made just one mistake. What's that? You should have stayed at home. Yeah, I should have stayed at home, all right. And if it weren't for Ned Grant, I could have. And then it hit me. Sure. Suddenly I knew what the ideal vacation meant for that crazy Broadway columnist. The answer had been right under my nose from the start. Yeah, I'd finally figured out where Grant was. But it wasn't doing me much good. I had to get out of here, and at the moment my chances didn't look too good. You know, Dollar, you got a very funny look on your face. Have I? Yeah, like something just rang a bell with you. Oh, sorry, Bemis, it's... Just my normal, delirious expression. Okay, funny boy. Play it your way. Over against the wall. Move. Hold it. Listen. There's a car outside. A friend of yours? I don't know. I'm not taking any chances. Now you answer the door, Dollar. I'll be right behind it, and this gun will be staring at your back. It could be Ned Grant who'd driven up, in which case I'd have to warn him somehow. Or it could be somebody else, in which case I had to grab their car and get out of here. One thing sure, whoever it was, I had to move fast. Johnny? I pulled the door open wide, then threw my weight against it. It slammed into Bemis and flattened him against the wall. He was off balance, so I could He crawled and his gun went flying. But I couldn't see where and I couldn't take time to look. I grabbed Doris. Johnny! Come on. Come on. Come on, I went to the car. Now, you're going to help me for a change. That was Bemis. Don't tell me you're surprised. You're the one who tipped him off about the ski lodge. But, Johnny, I had 
had no choice. He pushed me around. Yeah, sure. Johnny, where are we going? New York. Do you think Ned's there? Doris, I think he's been there right from the start. We stopped at the nearest town to call the sheriff. I wanted his boys to try and intercept Bemis. He was a cinch to be following us by now. Then we headed for the city. The sun was rising when we pulled up at Grant's apartment house. The manager didn't answer. Maybe he's still asleep. Looks like I have to take another chance on you, Doris. I tell you, I'm on the level, Johnny. I sure hope so. I got to get up to Grant's apartment fast. Now, there's a payphone over there in the lobby. Call the police and then meet me upstairs. Go on. Okay, Johnny. I went upstairs and pounded on Grant's door, but no answer. I went to the end of the hall and out onto the fire escape. Yeah, there was a ledge. Carefully, I worked my way along it to a window. It was Grant's bedroom, all right. And there he was, sound asleep, with an empty bottle on the bed table. So my hunch had been right. Sure, it was the ideal vacation for a guy who was pestered by everybody in town. Tell everyone you're leaving the city, then disconnect your phone and hole up in your apartment for some real peace and quiet. I went to the front door. Doris? Yes, Johnny, let me in. Okay, just a sec. Well, Doris, I was... Well, well. Well, well. If it ain't Johnny Dollar. Hello, Bemis. Now, ain't this nice? So you did it again, Doris. Honest, Johnny, I couldn't help it. He has a gun. He made me. Yeah, sure. Pretty smart, huh, Dollar? Finding Ned Grant for me? You know, I don't think I'd ever thought of looking for him here. But you did, so you're a smart boy. Okay, now look, Beeman. Don't interrupt me while I'm talking. Like I was saying, I'm much obliged to you for helping me find Grant. Now that I got him, okay. So I don't need you around anymore. No, don't! Slowly and with a smirk on his face, Bemis raised his gun until it pointed straight at my head. Uh, it flew out of his hand. The shot had come from outside, down the hall. The cops! Suddenly, the corridor was swarming with police. Bemis stole for his gun. Well, you don't get me! Instead, he collected the butt of one over his left ear. Oh, oh, thank goodness they got here. So you did call the police after all. You bet I did. Now, do you believe I'm on the level? Yeah, Doris, I guess I do. And you took a mighty good way to prove it. Uh, what's going on here? Ned. So you finally woke up. Or yeah. Woke it up. Who... Hey. That's Willie Bemis, the cardio away. It sure is. Well, what's he doing here? What's going on, huh? Hey, look, Bright Eyes, you better go on back to bed. But I don't understand. Just write the whole deal off as a bad dream, huh? <laughs> Expense account total, $115.25. And look, the next time you send me out to protect a guy, don't pick one who's going to sleep all the way through the deal, huh? I don't know. It, it kind of takes the sport out of it. And, Pat, since I didn't find a man who ran away for you, on account of he never really ran away, well, how about sending my fee on this one to the community chest? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our... And now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, an old, old racket comes to light and nearly cost me my life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. Written by Robert Rice, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Mary Jane Croft, Lawrence Dobkin, Joseph Kearns, Jack Edwards, Barney Phillips, and Byron Kane. Be sure to join us next week, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. This 
is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.